Well, I haven't been able to say this in a while. Good while. Good morning, First Baptist Church. I'm so glad to have many of you with us. And of course, we want to welcome all those listening to us on the radio and on Facebook this morning. Um, we're so glad you're here. Happy Father's Day to all of the dads out there. Um, and also, congratulations to the class of 2020. Um, wow. And I'll tell you, church, I know you would agree with me, this class has already had to weather so many storms. Um, but we've seen a class that has done a great job with weathering that storm. And so I truly believe uh, that our future is bright with this class. Um, so uh, this morning, just a few little housekeeping things. Uh, those of you who are in the building, I'm so glad to see that you came in with the green arrows. We just ask that uh, following the service, or if you need to uh, use the facilities, we have the facilities in the back that are marked. Uh, follow the red arrows to the facilities, and then at the end of the service, follow the red arrows out to the parking lot. As much as we would love to uh, talk with you and conjugate in here, it's just not possible uh, right now. And so if you would, uh, after following the service, just maybe kind of wave, say God bless to someone, and then follow the red arrows out to the parking lot. Uh, and of course, this morning, we uh, even though we have masks on, we're not going to be able to, to sing uh, with our mouths, but we can sing in our hearts. So I want to invite you to stand now as we are going to do just that and sing the praises to our Lord this, this morning. For all the earth will sing his praises. You lived, you died, you said in three days you would rise, you did, you're alive. You rule, you reign, you said you're coming back again, I know that you will, and all the earth will sing your praises. And all the earth will sing your praises. You took, you take our sins away, oh God. You give, you gave your life away for us. You came down. You saved us through the cross And our hearts are changed Because of your great love You lived, you died You said in three days you would rise You did, you're alive You rule, you reign you said you're coming back again. I know that you will, and all the earth will sing your praises. And all the earth will sing your praises. You took, you take our sins away, oh God. You give, you gave your life away for us. You came down, you saved us through the cross. And our hearts are changed because of your great love. You lived, you died, you said in three days you would rise, you did. You're alive. You rule, you reign. You said you're coming back again. I know that you will, and all the earth will sing your praises. 
and all the earth will sing your praises. You lived, you died, you said in three days you would rise. You did, you're alive. You roll, you reign, you said you're coming back again. I know that you will, and all the earth will sing your praises. You lived. You died, you said in three days you would rise, you did, you're alive. You roll, you reign, you said you're coming back again. I know that you will, and all the earth will sing your praises. 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 Amen. Would you pray with me this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you. And we thank you for the ability to worship with our fellow believers once again. Lord, we thank you for those that we're worshiping with now who are still at home and watching us on social media or listening to us on the radio or perhaps worshiping in their vehicles as they're driving and listening to us on the radio. Lord, wherever they may be, we thank you that we can worship with our brothers and sisters in Christ this morning. We thank you for dads. We thank you for those dads who are God-honoring men who work so hard to help raise godly families. Pray that you would bless them this morning, that you'd be with them. And lastly, Lord, we thank you for the class of 2020, a class that has had to endure so much already in the, in the beginning of their lives into this next chapter. Lord, we thank you for the class of 2020 here in our church who has clung to you, has clung to the truth, clung to the scriptures. Lord, we, th we pray that you just have your hand upon them and guide them and help them to stay close to you from this day forward the rest of their lives. And we pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Would you remain standing as we're going to continue singing this morning? Over all the earth, you reign on high, every mountain stream and every sunset sky. But my one request, Lord, my only aim is that you reign in me again. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour. You are the Lord of all I am so won't you reign in me again and over every thought and over every word may my life reflect the beauty of my Lord cause you mean more to me than any earthly thing so won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour. You are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour. You are the Lord of all I am, so won't you reign in me again?
Amen. Would you be seated this morning? And uh, I'd like you to welcome Rinaldin Begay as he's going to uh, make a presentation to the class of 2020. Good morning. Uh, good morning to those guys out on Facebook. Hello. Um, but as the graduates are standing up and getting ready to come across the stage to receive their Bibles, um, I'd just like to say that, uh, uh, you know, thank you for this opportunity to be your youth leader, um, to uh, share with these kids, and uh, that um, I, I've been their youth leader um, ever since some of these kids were sixth graders. So it's awesome to see how uh, mature and how they've grown and how they've gr grown in Christ. So, um, but I just wanted to give you a short message of where uh, these guys are coming from as far as they're going to receive their Bibles and a scholarship. And um, the, the text is out of Matthew 7, um, verses 24 through 29, and that talks about... Um, finding your foundation and what foundation are you going to rely upon and it's basically saying there's one that is Jesus and there's one that's the way of the world and um, we're going to go through storms either way and uh, we just want you to um, with these Bibles keep that foundation in Christ throughout your lives, because you will go through the storms, you will um, need help, and relying on God faithfully is what he wants the most as far as a personal relationship with you. So uh, the first one that's going to come up to the stage to receive their Bibles is Madison Ann Payton. She's making her way up. Madison is attending UNM in Albuquerque, and she will be studying in accounting. So thank you, Madison. Wave to everybody on Facebook. All right. Awesome. All right. Bailey. <laughs> Bailey Madison Keeler. She will be attending Baylor University. And she will be studying biochemistry. Okay. What? Okay. And then uh, we have Sierra Shelley Holloway. <laughs> and she is applying to go to the Navy right now. And uh, make sure you wave to everybody on Facebook after that. Okay. And uh, if you want to see these kids' interviews, um, they're on YouTube. Um, we'll, we'll upload that tomorrow with the full, uh, the full download. And last but not least, Kylie Taylor Begay. <laughs> Kylie will be taking a year off to decide what she really wants to do. Make sure you wave to everybody at Facebook. Okay, thank you, and um, good job. <laughs> so you'll see the video on, fi on, on YouTube. We have 14 graduates. Um, it's about 41 minutes of pictures and interviews. They answer five questions, and uh, you'll see that um, on the YouTube channel of First Baptist Church Gallup. Thank you. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. And failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Yeah, 
fail you won't define me Cause that's what my father does applause to the class of 2020 okay congratulations congratulations would you stand as we're going to continue our praise this morning lord of all creation Oh, water, earth, and sky The heavens are your tabernacle Glory to the Lord on high God of wonders beyond our galaxy You are holy, holy the universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and So early in the morning, I will celebrate the light. 
And when I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth, hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy, and precious Lord, reveal your heart to me, Father, hold me, hold me, the universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy, God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Thinking about this day, I was wanting to do a special for you all this morning. And uh, my apologies to the dads who have sons. I'll try to find a song for you next year. Um, but being the, the father of, of a daughter, um, this is a song that's always been near and dear to my heart. Uh, in fact, I heard it on the radio the day after my daughter was born. And it's a very special song. And so I want to dedicate this to all the dads out there, and um, I hope you enjoy these, this beautiful song written by Stephen Curtis Chapman, Cinderella. She spins and she sways to whatever song plays without a care in the world. And I'm sitting here wearing the weight of the world on my shoulders. It's been a long day and there's still work to do. She's pulling and be saying, Dad, I need you. There's a ball at the castle and I've been invited. And I need to practice my dancing. No, oh, please, Dad, please. So I will dance with Cinderella while she is here in my arms. Cause I know something the prince never knew. Whoa, 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 whoa. I will dance with Cinderella. I don't want to miss even one song. Cause all too soon. The clock will strike midnight and shall be gone. Well, she says he's a nice guy and I'd be impressed. She wants to know if I approve of the dress. She said, Dad, the prom is just one week away. 
And I need to practice my dancing And oh please, daddy please So I will dance with Cinderella While she is here in my arms Cause I know something the prince never knew I don't want to miss even one song Cause all too soon The clock will strike midnight And she'll be gone And she will be She came home today with a ring on her hand Just going and telling us all they had planned She said, Dad, the wedding's still six months away And I need to practice my dancing So please, Daddy, please So I will dance with Cinderella While she is here in my arms Cause I know something the prince never knew Whoa, 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 I will dance with Cinderella I don't want to miss even one song Cause all too soon the clock will strike midnight And she'll be gone We certainly want to wish everyone who is watching by social media and here in this room as well as on radio a very happy Father's Day and as we celebrated the seniors that have grown up in this church some could not be here because because they wanted to because of unseen circumstances they're not able to attend as many of you know there are some things that have affected our community over the last several weeks this is our 14th Sunday as we begin back our services and I'm going to be focused today on living shaken in a troubled world. You may have your Bibles. You want to turn to the 46th chapter of the uh, book of Psalm. 150 Psalms would be uh, 46 Psalm. We'll be reading out of verse 1. You may want to keep your Bibles open because I'll make references to several of the passages found in this particular Psalm and I will be Focusing today on God's uh, protection, God's provision, God's preeminence. And you will find that we don't need to be shook up when our world is shaken down. And that's what's basically happening in the world which is around us. If you have your Bibles open, if you'll stand in honor of God's Word as we read it together. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. An ever-present help in trouble. May we pray today. God, we have assembled here this morning in our facility. Many are watching and viewing this through social media, through radio, from different places all literally around the world. And I'd ask God that you would speak to our hearts today, no matter what our troubles may be or what we perceive them to be, that you are a constant in the universe you have created all things you've made all things we honor you because you are the god the one and true god the god of our salvation and the god that we have hope in for it is in the name of jesus we pray amen thank you for standing in honor of god's word thank you for those of you who are listening today many who are followers of christ known as christians during a, a lifetime that they may live, no matter how long, how short it may be, if you are a follower of Christ, you realize 
that you and I will face many trials and changes in circumstances in life. Experience teaches us that God will not always prevent these tragedies and troubles from coming to those who are Christians. But God is a present help in time of trouble. There are those scholars who research and have spent many years of their life researching biblical truths. And we know that the Bible to be the Word of God. And Psalm 46 was composed during troubled times. More than likely, it was penned during Sennacherib's invasion. In 2 Kings, beginning in the 18th chapter, verse 13, and following all the way through chapter 19 and 37. But there's one thing that the psalmist is expressing to us that we can take hold of this morning. And that is express faith during these troubled times. He believed God was greater and mightier than the crisis. You will notice as you look down in verse 1 of chapter 46 of Psalm, God is our refuge. And the psalmist is giving evidence of the psalmist's serenity during tremendous earth-shattering crisis. Maybe you and I have experienced that in our spirit, watched it on media sources, but he did not panic. He maintained a confident serenity. The flagrations the psalmist mentioned are catastrophic possibilities Though the earth may give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, and though the waters roar and foam, the mountains quake with their surging. The picture is the psalmist's conception of the worst thing that could happen. And oftentimes we m imagine things that are terrible, but they're not the worst thing that could happen. But there's confidence. The psalmist expresses his confidence in God. God is our refuge and strength and a ever-present help in trouble. When we first read this, we realize that the very first word in verse 1 is God. It is formulated in the English L, referring to the word Elohim. And the same word is used in Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. The Bible begins with a simple but profound declaration of faith in the beginning there is god presently there is god and in the future there is god everything else is the result of the activity of god god provides safety in the storms of life strength for stability in life he is a very present help in trouble there's a statement that many people would probably like to know where it came from. I seem to be pressed between a rock and a hard place. Technically, it was a miner's phrase in the state of Arizona um, back in the early days of mining in the southwest. And there was some very deep, hard rock. And many of those miners, after working many hours and days in this terrible, hard basin of rock, uh, they chose not to work, only to realize that when they didn't work, they would not receive a paycheck. And so they were between a rock and a hard place. All of us can realize that we have some hurdles to face in our tomorrows. We don't know always what tomorrow may face, but we do know that God is always there to protect us, and he gives us some handles to hold on to. There's the hand, handle of anxiety and fear, possible harm. That is a phobia. We have all kinds of phobia. People are scared of heights, tight places, scared of the wind, scared of the sun, scared of the dark. All of us are phobias. But there's also the handle of faith, which you will use which one? A handle of fear or a handle of faith? faith. It's what you'll base your day, your week, your month, your year, your life upon. 
And we have gone through so many struggles over the last several weeks. We had a worldwide pandemic, and it is still raging, and that certainly is a fear. We've had some protests and needed protests to bring about fairness in the law. But it has moved to destructive and riots and even more cause of death. One that we seem to be failing to see is that of the record unemployment that actually precedes that of the Depression era. These are record numbers. And you and I must turn to the same refuge that the psalmist found, and it was simply God. We find strength to stand when the world shakes down. You'll also discover not only does God offer protection, but he offers provision. In Psalm 46, verses 4 and 7, he is not only the creator, but he is the sustainer. These verses have present refuge to the city of God, which was Jerusalem. And it had no river in it, or built along a river. As you are maybe a study a uh, person who studies the development of the world, Babylon, was built upon the Euphrates River, Egypt along the Nile, Rome along the Tiber, the Thames uh, River in London, the River Rhine in Germany. You'll also find that London was built as this Thames River. You'll find New York has its Hudson, and St. Louis built along the mighty Mississippi, as many cities in the North American continent. But verses 4 and 7 gives evidence of the psalmist's security. He knew something that his enemies did not know, and that was unseen security. The river in this particular passage, there is a river which is applying both physical and spiritual. During the days of Hezekiah, a tunnel was built underneath the vast walls of Jerusalem, and had been dug to bring water from the Gideon Spring into a reservoir inside the city of Jerusalem. The psalmist was probably refers to this fact. The enemies did not know that the inhabitants of Jerusalem had an unfailing supply of water. God always supplies his people with marvelous provisions even when they don't realize it. The city, verse 4, refers to the city of God. He recognized that Jew Jerusalem was an invincible city and had been captured many times by the enemy, but eventually, the psalmist knew, he looked to the security of a new Jerusalem, a stream that was refreshed. Jerusalem was the very presence of God. You'll find reference to this new Jerusalem in Revelation, the 21st chapter, beginning in verse 1 through 5a. And there is a unique concept in the city of Jerusalem, a new city that we need to grasp because of the words that are used in the New Testament. There is the word that means new. New of something the same kind. For example, we may go out and we'll purchase a new shirt, and it is new, new of the same kind. We may have a blouse or a dress or even a new car, but it's new of the same kind. The word that John uses in the book of Revelation is a new, a new of something unique that has never been before. He refers to this in this passage found in Revelation, the 21st chapter, beginning verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw a holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them, they will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and they will be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no longer 
any more death, mourning, or crying, or pain. The old order of things have passed away. He who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. In Revelation, the 22nd chapter, beginning verse 1, the angel showed me a river of water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God, and the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river, tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God of the Lamb will be in the city. His servants will serve Him. They will see His face. His name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They will not need the light of the lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord, God, will give them light. And he, they will reign forever and forever. See, God is always providing not only our physical needs, but our spiritual needs. You'll find in John's Gospel, the 7th chapter, and verse 37, Oh, on the last great day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If a man is thirsty... Let him come and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, streams of living water will flow within him. Visual picture is that we are in the midst of a dry riverbed. Our life is like that. We are in the middle of a dry well, and God brings living water. How vital it is for us to have water to sustain physical life we will have to have a relationship with god through jesus christ to give spiritual christ spiritual life and whatever the crisis the psalmist faced it seemed to be predominant in his life yet faith looked to the lord and found that the lord was greater than the crisis that is what we've got to come away with whether we are a class of 2020 recently graduated which we celebrated today Maybe you're even a father, and if you're like me, sometimes it comes across a father's mind. I can remember the day when my children were born and how happy I was of that day, but also ran in the back of my mind, will I be able to provide for them and care for them and education that they will desperately need? Will I be able to sustain them as a have, as an earthly father and i realize that god is enough he comes into our life he takes away those fears because you see god is preeminent he was before all things he's in all things he is all things because he is god he has created all things even in we're made in his own image but we realize that in these verses beginning in verse 8 and following come and see what the Lord has done. The desolation, desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to ends of the earth and breaks the bow. You'll find that he shatters the spear, burns the shield of fire. Amazing what God says to us in the midst of all these things. There is a battle in the war between the states known as the Civil War as the battle of the wilderness. Not long after, newly named general-in-chief of the army, U Ulysses S. Grant, took the Army of the Potomac toward the Confederate capital of Richmond starting out before dawn on May the 4th, 1864. In the battle of the wilderness from May five and six you will find that there was fire and smoke and dense undergrowth and blind shots as well as the two days of bitter fighting in the photo that you're seeing is a year after the wilderness had been destroyed by fire started by cannon artillery fire and fire coming from rifles and the fires that started even that swept so swiftly through the wilderness Robert E. Lee, who was a master at engineering and arranging for troops' movements, lured Grant into this battle, and even Grant wanted to go to engage Lee to keep him from sending forces 
to aid Sherman in his march to the sea. You'll notice that after a year of fighting, the wilderness was totally destroyed, yet it was still in, uninhabitable. People couldn't even walk through it, nor man or beast. But what brought about in this battle? It was coming to the close of what was known as the war between the states. In these two days of fighting, 17,500 Union troops were lost. 10,000 Confederates. That's 27,500 people lost their lives fighting so we could set people free in the bondage of slavery. This led to more two weeks of battle in northern Virginia. Even Grant said, no more desperate fighting has been witnessed on this continent than in May 5 and 6, 1864. And there are people today that want to tear down his monument. As Rome was falling, Augustine looked beyond all earthly cities to the city of God. Western civilization, was noted, was headed into the eclipse of the dark ages. Yet the church, which is divinely established, did and will survive. You'll discover that the city of God remains when all earthly cities will be destroyed. Look with me, if you would, please, in the passage that you'll find in verse 7 of this particular chapter, 46 of Psalm. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is their fortress. You know, there's several statements that we grasp out of this particular psalm. God who is in the beginning of all things, starts this particular psalm, the God of the universe. He is our refuge and our strength. He is that ever-present help in trouble. What does he say in the next phrase? Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth give way. Everything around us seems to be shattered. But the God of the provision is the river whose streams make glad in the city of God the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, and she will not fail. Here you find this battle of the wilderness, and after two days of fighting, and there was silence on the battlefield. Grant walked through and experienced the quietness. You and I need to experience this in our own lives. And he says something very unique. After he is going to destroy the bow and the shatters the spear and burns the shield of fire, he says, be still. In this particular passage that we have just read, be still, this phrase, he carries with it uh, an amazing word picture. Too often we're taking up the enemy's bow or pulling the sword or firing a gun, or even raising a clenched clinch fist. What does he say? He said, be still. It means hands are dropped. Hands are washed. We are trusting God to take control of our lives and the situations that we faced. This is an exhortation and as it does, the psalmist calls his re readers to stop and think. To seriously contemplate life and will result in the realization that there is a God who brings peace, first of all, to our hearts. If there's anything men need today, regardless of their ethnicity, we sing a song that I have longed to love all of my life. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. He wants us to be still, to let your hands drop. And then it is an expression of personal confidence in verse 11. As we read that passage, the very last 
verse of chapter 46, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Isn't it amazing that the psalmist uses Jacob? When he oftentimes refers to the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. We can think of all the characters in the Bible, but Jacob is used. A trickster. The second born of twins. He's even said in the scripture, he was a heel grabber. Took his brother's inheritance. Yet, God still has room for him, the God of Jacob. And that means he has, God has room for us. No matter where a man may have failed his family, or where a man may have missed the boat, or where a man may have lost his way, or maybe he's never found his way, this God provides salvation in the midst of troubling times. We seem to have these living experiences today. And maybe you feel overwhelmed and struggle with it, because I certainly have. All the things that I've had to, emotions that I've had to go through, but we realize that we are God people of God, and we hear his voice, and he says, be still. Even in the midst of the crisis and the troubling times, certainly the times that you and I are living in are timberless, and these are increasing, not decreasing. Amid these troubled times, we need to place our trust in the Lord. Accept the Lord as your refuge. For these troubled days. You may be needing to be at peace in your spirit. So many times. Men. And I've been there so I know what it's like. I know the feeling. Of being in angered in your spirit. Angry in my flesh. Disgusted with life. Maybe my career, your career. Hasn't gone the way we thought. Yet there is a God who knows the journey. He knows what we'll be facing. Even in the middle of the troubles presently, we still have a God. And that God wants to become very real to you today. You may just need to simply bow your head from where you're seated in this auditorium. Or you may be needed to be bowing in your living room, a great room of your house. You might need to Take a few moments from the busyness of life. As soon as this service is over, you've got things you need to do. What does God say? Be still. Drop your hands. Humble your life before the Lord. Acknowledge Him as your God. Invite Him into your life in the forgiveness of sin. You may be a follower of Christ, but your life doesn't reflect it. You may not have any idea what it is to be a follower of Christ. We're in the business of trying to help people understand the pathway to God. Not all pathways lead to God. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. You may be a person who loves the Lord with all your heart, but you're troubled. Be still. We're gonna lead, I'm going to lead in prayer. And then we're going to sing one of the great hymns of our faith that you may need to sing today as well. Father, we humble ourselves before you. We acknowledge you as our God. There's some who need to repent of sin and invite you to come in, and they do so now. They just simply ask you to forgive them of their sin and come into their life. There may be believers out there that are troubled in spirit, and they just need to be still and acknowledge you as God. Father, we thank you that you allow us in every generation to hear your voice because you are a faithful God. You provide for us. You're the one who protects, provides. Your preeminence, who before all things you hear today, hear our hearts as Nathan sings. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of 
turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. And all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, born with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, and all I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto sin and the peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand besides Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, and all I have needed thy hand hath provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, and all I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great We want to thank all of you for joining us on the radio and on Facebook this morning. And of course, right here in church, it's uh, great to worship with you again this morning. Dads, we pray that you have a great Father's Day, and we pray all of you would have a great blessed week. God bless.